Hey guys, welcome back to Micho Makes. My name is Micho. I like to make stuff. Today I've got another project with you, and I'm sorry I have to dub this over because the engine sounds really loud. But you can, as you can see on my 98 Camry, I've got a little voltage problem. I've got my multimeter set up here, and I got the engine running, and it's only getting about 11.71 volts. And I believe the suspect is the alternator there. So, uh, what we're going to do today is try to get this alternator replaced, get this all taken out, and um, go kind of through a step by step process of what you need to do. As you can see, this alternator is probably the original one from the factory, so it's probably due in time for it to get changed out. So, uh, let's go ahead and get the next uh, part started. Okay, I've got the uh, car turned off now, but you can see the battery bouncing back. Um, and if you leave it too long, or it's just getting drawn out like that, it's going to actually hurt the battery a lot. Um, I first noticed this when I was actually driving home. And I was, luckily, I was only like maybe less than a quarter of a mile from my house. And basically had a, the RPM just dropped nothing. Clock turned off. Radio turned off. AC turned off, and um, it just literally felt like it was running on the battery. I rev, rev the RPMs, and it would the tachometer would jump up and then drop, drop up. So it basically shut down like all the accessories. Um, it got home, cranked over the engine. Uh, I, I sorry, jumped it, jumped the engine, and then got my multimeter out on the battery and noticed that. Um, uh, once I got it fired up and then the probe is back on, I saw the exact same thing where it basically was at like 11 volts um, uh, and basically running directly off the battery and not charging off the not charging all, off the alternator at all. So um, I've got a replacement here. I'm going to crack it open. This should be a pretty quick job. Uh, basically, what we're going to need to do is um, obviously remove these connectors right here, both these connectors right here. Uh, this is a tensioning nut right here. We have to remove this, lower it down take the belt off the pulley and then we've got another bracket back here with a gosh it looks like a 14 14 millimeter socket that needs to be uh, taken off and then literally just pulled off put the new one back on and then replace it and test the system and make sure it's still actually charging now but um, we'll go ahead and get started on this um, should be a pretty simple job the, the worst part was actually I was testing this I left it running and the headers are really hot right now so hopefully i'll avoid burning myself oh and by the way the first thing you want to do anytime you're working on the charging system is to remove the battery uh, terminals get the battery dis completely disconnected um, the alternator will possibly hold the charge still so you do not want to get shocked by that thing and, and just making sure that you don't have any issues get these batteries removed yeah you're gonna have to you're gonna lose your radio stations or whatever but it's worth it not getting shocked okay quick update um there were a couple connections you need to remove one was this off this little stud right here and um it was where'd it go this bracket right here right there um, that was mounted right there on the alternator and then this top one was this connection up here and that was a uh, 10 millimeter and then this one was attached right here and that was a little bit more difficult to remove um, did need to use a little bit of pliers and then um, be very very careful about not breaking these clips this is an old car so a lot of this plastic might be brittle but um yeah looks like i got all the wiring off from what i can see Yeah, looks like it's just removed. So, pretty simple. Two minutes done. Okay, next we're going to loosen up this one, which I did actually already, and then loosen up this um, main bracket bolt here so we can loosen it up and get the uh, loosen up the belt for the um, for the alternator. Um, I don't think I can push it down just yet. Oh, you know what? There's another tension bolt right here. So, this is a lock bolt right here. So, loosen this one up to give me some slack because you can see it's pretty long. And then loosen this one up and I'll actually be able to um, slide down and be able to get the belt off. Then next we're going to have to take a look at removing this bolt here too. 
Okay, pretty simple. Got the belt off, loosened up. I had to remove or loosen this one, obviously I loosened this one, and loosen this one. This was a 14. These are both uh, 12. And now you can see that this is how it, it's tensioned on the, the belt is tensioned on this pulley right here. So now the next step is to get this bracket removed. Um, actually, I'll probably just unbolt this one, leave this, leave this bolt on here, and then remove this bolt here to get it completely out. And then we will take a look at the replacement that I got. Okay, uh, that was pretty simple just to get those uh, bolts out. But you can see these. this is the tr uh, actually original Toyota um, equipment one. Um, it's got the badge. I don't think it's Reman at all, but you can see. Um, and then this is one, my brand new one. Um, this is... A one I just got off Amazon I don't know the manufacturer maybe I should have tried to go find an OE one but um, I didn't really think it was worth it um, I had to wait a little bit for this one because uh, if I want to go to like O'Reilly's um, to try to get one it was like 200 bucks this was only a hundred dollars and I waited a couple days for it but you can see that all the connections are exactly the same it's actually got new bolts in it so we will be using the new bolts Make sure you have a nice clean connection but i measured it out um the bracket size over here is perfectly exactly the same um the pulley on the other hand seems to be a little bit bigger so i think it's okay i just need to drop drop it a little bit more in into the engine uh, it should be fine but no real noise from when I spin it, but you can tell there's a lot less. T you can't really tell, but you can see in there. But it's not spinning as freely as this one, and I think that is not a good thing <laughs> if it spins too freely because this look bearing looks super worn. And then this one, it, there's definitely a lot more um, tension in this. So I think that is actually a, a good thing for these. Um, and then this one is probably just pretty much dead, but I'm gonna go ahead and just reverse the process and then get this one placed in there get that rear bolt back in get the Get the uh, uh, bolt attached here figure out the tension make sure that uh, The belt gets put on first Obviously get it all tensioned up and then make these connections right here right here and this connection too as well And we'll go and test it out In the case you're wondering what the engine bay looks like without the alternator inside, it's pretty bare, but this is super easy to work on. Look how nice this is on my Xterra. Um, you definitely have to take the wheel off, get underneath the car to get it all out. This thing is literally just right in front. Super nice, super easy. The bolt for the tension is right here still, locked in. And I've got the longer 14 millimeter one back here on my uh, bench over here. So I will go ahead and get it slapped back in. Okay, I ran into a little issue with the fitment. Um, right here you can see it just doesn't fit fully and flush. It, you do want to have it pretty flipping tight, but it just will not go in. So what I'm going to do is grab my angle grinder and shave off a very small amount on this edge. Maybe this one, but just so it fits perfectly. Um, you don't want any gap between these two, but just I'm just going to take a little bit off just so that it, um, it fit perfectly. Um, I would rather take it off on the alternator than on the bracket itself. But yeah, it's frustrating because obviously these are third party ones. You'd, you'd hope that they fit pretty much OEM, but if you don't have access to an angle grinder to make these adjustments, um, you would have to, how would you solve this? I know that there is a sleeve in here. You might need to push that sleeve out somewhat to make these fit, but I don't know. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it done so that I can get this done. Okay, so with a little bit of grinding on both the front and the back side, um, it fits perfectly now, so we'll go ahead and get this thing slapped in. Okay, with the bolts just kind of finger tight in there, I'm still able to move this up and down. No problem. Um, go ahead and get the belt back on. Um, obviously, make sure, since this is a little bit bigger pulley, I think, to get everything threaded back on. 
on the uh, looks like the air conditioning pump and I'll fill the the crank down there so get everything aligned back up and then we can tension up the belt and we should be almost done done okay belts back on took a quick second just to get the alignment right nice and tensioned we'll go ahead and get the electrical components back on um, and then use these nice new bolts that should be nice and then get everything plugged back up but after that we're ready to turn it on and test them out okay everything back together bolt on here bolted on here plugged in here we should be good to go Let's give her a final test a look we'll reconnect our battery and then fire her up and see what happens and check the voltage hopefully we'll start seeing some better voltages at the battery and then our job is done so let's go ahead and get that done hey guys welcome back uh i just wanted to quickly dub this over just because it's so loud in the engine bay with the engine on and my microphone was not picking my voice but got the new alternator in it's 13.6 five seven eight uh, volts at the battery so the battery is charging now um, so definitely the alternator was a massive issue again that was the original alternator that we had used before so you know it, i'm surprised it lasted actually that long 20 plus years um so what we're doing now we're just double checking the voltage making sure everything's good to go um and really just buttoning up everything in the engine bay um i know that um, if you didn't and you kept running the battery low like that, you would have definitely killed the battery. Um, I've definitely killed batteries when they don't get enough charge. But you can see that I've got some other projects I need to do on this thing, like the leaky valve gasket. Um, the timing belt is super old. Uh, gosh, I don't even know how I'm old now. So yeah, we're probably going to be adding in a lot more projects to this Camry because we've got a lot of stuff to work on it. I'd like to keep this car as long as I can. This is a 5SFE engine. It's a four-cylinder, and you know, if you guys know these vehicles, they are tanks. They don't really go bad very often. So I'm really glad that the alternator was the issue that we had with this. Um, as you can see right here, just showing off the, the OEM one. I'm glad that this, um, this aftermarket one's working, and I hope that it you know, works for at least maybe even half as long as the OEM one. Um, but yeah, this thing seems to be working well. Um, it actually had sat for, gosh, almost 10 years and really didn't move for a while. But this thing literally just fired up, had an oil change, obviously a little charging issue. But beyond that, the thing has been just a beast. And actually installing the alternator was not too bad, but just showing off the bracket where... Um, we had some issues of clearance and getting those shaved down worked really well, super easy. But um, if you guys like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. That'd be awesome. You know, if subscribing would be great too. I'm going to try to do a few more projects on this Camry, but I'll be getting back to, you know, doing model kits, working on Xterra too as well. But thanks very much. Have a good rest of your day, guys. See ya.